It also follows that a faith community should appoint as their ambassador, as their interreligious person, a member who is a credit to that community. A country does not appoint as an ambassador a citizen whom the police have been looking for for the past three weeks, <laughs> or a citizen who cannot distinguish the flag of his country among three other flags, or a citizen who has forgotten the name of the President of the Republic. Such a person is not qualified as an ambassador. In the same way, a person going forth to engage in interreligious relations should be a good ambassador of his faith community. That's clear. Otherwise, he compromised the whole, all of you. To conclude, a person can say to me, all this is theory. Any practice? Yes. Here are some interreligious initiatives taken in the last few decades. In 1968, the World Conference on Religion and Peace was established by Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, Jews, and Hindus to promote collaboration in favor of peace. It has its headquarters in New York. Now, the Japanese are very active in it. In 1986, and again in 2002, Pope John Paul II invited people of many religions to come to Assisi to pray for peace. In 1986, because it was International Year for Peace, declared by United Nations. In 2002, because of 9-11, when some people thought that interreligious relations are at a high risk. We thank God it didn't happen, the high risk. People of each religion prayed in Assisi, in a separate place. There was no interreligious prayer, because prayer is based on faith. To the extent we believe the same thing, to that extent, we can have the same prayer. In 1987, the various religions in Japan organized, and they continue to organize every year at a date near the anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. They organize prayer meeting very near to Nagasaki or Hiroshima in Japan. I have taken part in several of them. Since 1987, the Catholic Association called the Community of Sant'Egidio in Rome organizes each year the meeting of people of different religions to reflect and pray for peace, and they rotate it from country to country. The Focolare Catholic Movement has many initiatives that involve people of many religions, especially Christians and Muslims. In the United Kingdom, Muslims join Christians to fight against abortion, in the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. In Bosnia-Herzegovina, Christians, Jews, and Muslim religious leaders strive to promote reconciliation. In the Philippines, the Silsila Christian Mus Muslim Movement in Zamboanga has been involved in several projects of education for the poor, building homes for the homeless, protecting the dignity of women, and feeding the hungry. In Nigeria, Christian and Muslim religious leaders join in a national association to persuade their co-religionists to live in harmony and avoid all violence. In Sierra Leone, Christian and Muslim religious leaders have acted as mediators for reconciliation between the government and the rebel group during the years of conflict in Sierra Leone about 10 years ago. In 1965, the Second Vatican Council, the meeting of 3,000 bishops in the Catholic Church from 1962 to 65, issued a document, Nostra Etate, on the promotion of interreligious dialogue. A year before that, Pope Paul VI instituted a new department of the Roman Curia, the central offices in the Catholic Church, now called the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, for this activity alone. I know a little about it because I worked 18 years there. <laughs> Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI have met leaders of other religions many times in Rome and outside Rome during their apostolic journeys. 
the religious congregations of the little sisters of Jesus and of little brothers of Jesus, founded by Blessed Charles de Foucault, principally to live among Muslims and show them friendship. They have done much. The missionaries of Africa, popularly known as White Fathers, founded by Cardinal Lavigerie, precisely to work among Muslims. They run an institute of university status just for this purpose in Rome. In September 2007, 138 Muslim leaders from all around the world wrote Pope Benedict XVI to ask for dialogue. Their first meeting with Vatican representatives was held last year. I have seen a monastery of nine Carmelite nuns in Marawi City in southern Philippines, a city that is 99.9% .9 Muslim. And these Carmelite nuns located their monastery there to show their goodwill towards the Muslims. The Muslims wish them well, and they wish the Muslims well. They don't engage in uh, high-level uh, elucubrations and the talks. Catholic dioceses and Catholic bishops' conferences around the world have developed programs in promotion of interreligious dialogue. I could name examples in Mali, in Chad, in uh, um, Niger Republic, in Senegal, but time does not allow for all that. From all these considerations, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that interreligious dialogue is not just a topic to be discussed but it is a role to be played, and it is work to be done in the world of today, and it is relevant. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Just have a seat for a minute, and then we'll call you back. We just have a minute or so, Your Eminence, for uh, commercials. They're everywhere in our country, even here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, today at the City Club of Cleveland, we're listening to a special forum featuring Cardinal Francis Orinze, and we will return to our distinguished speaker in a minute for our traditional City Club questions, and uh, if you uh, want to take this time to formulate a question for our speaker, that would be good, and um, I'm just supposed to remind you that uh, it would be good if the question were brief and to the point. We want to welcome you all to this special City Club forum. And our greetings go to all of you who are here in the room, and uh, also to those who uh, may in the future wind up hearing or seeing this. We hope you'll join the City Club, those of you who are not members, and become active in our ongoing civic dialogue. Friday, July 31st, the City Club of Cleveland welcomes the new uh, Director of the Department of Transportation, Jolene Molitoris. On Friday, August 7th, the City Club will host Ambassador Edward Dirajan, Director of the James A. Baker Institute for Public Policy at Rice University. For more information on these and other forums at the City Club, please refer to the back of your printed programs. And if you wish to make reservations, order a CD or a DVD of today's program, please call 1-888-223-6786 or 216-621-0082. We are uh, pleased to welcome guests at a table hosted by the Fideli Group. Uh, we thank you for joining us, and we also like to acknowledge uh, the good offices of Chuck Ike and uh, the Nigerian community here across Northeast Ohio for their help in putting this forum together. Now we would like to uh, return to Cardinal Lorenze for our traditional City Club question and answer period. Welcome questions from everyone, including guests. Holding the microphone today is our City Club Director of Development, Jessica Leary Allen. We'll have our first question, please. 